Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwame Yasha Allah, Koholoimla. Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rekha Hakodash, the honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai to the best of their ability. This is Yachan Anawaf. It's coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And I uh, wanted to do a quick little breakdown on Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and um, 16. Because it can be a little confusing, you know, or better yet, I would say Christians, they, they've been taught for so long that this white guy, a blonde haired, blue eyed white Jesus is coming to save everybody and he loves everybody and all the nations can be saved through him. And, all you know, you can just do as you want to do. You're saved by grace. You know, it's a lot of lies that have been taught through Christianity. You know, us living in these last days, um, the Lord is, you know, you know, breaking the seal, so to speak, and showing the prophets, you know, the true breakdowns of these scriptures that have been construed and people have been confused by for so long. Because when a lot of people see the word world, they think that it automatically means everyone in the, you know, on the entire planet. And that's not the case. So let's read it real quick. We'll grab a few precepts to um, because you got to go precept upon precept, and that's what a lot of Christians don't do. You know that that's that's the biblical way, the way that the Lord told, and also the Spirit got to be dealing with you as well, because you can go precept upon precept, and if the Spirit is not dealing with you, you still won't get it. You know, so you know we pray to Yahweh about Shemiah side for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of breaking down the scriptures the right way, because one thing you don't want to do is add to or take away from the scriptures. Because, you know, you can be fucked up <laughs> like that, you know, cursed um, in a real bad way. You don't want to do that, you know, and it's best to stand down if you don't know what's really going on. You know, there's actually a scripture that says, you know, if you don't know, put your hand over your mouth, properly paraphrasing. Don't just be winging it. But, you know, by the spirit, the Lord has shown us, you know, um, what the real breakdowns of these scriptures are. So let's just read it real quick. Mark 16 and 15. This is going to be red letters, so we know that the Lord is speaking, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, but his name is Yahawashai, which means that he's the Savior or Deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew. And also the true name of the Father is Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one. See, a lot of these Christians, they don't, they don't break none of that stuff down, and they don't tell the people who's who. They're not telling the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that they are the Israelites and that this gospel, the good news, the new covenant, and all these, these things to come are for you. It's not for the heathen, you know? Not for the heathen. You know, it's lessons going out on a day-to-day -day basis breaking down who this is for. But let's just get into it. Mark 16 and 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So when you see that, it can be like, see, it's talking about everybody, but it's not, you know, and, you know, when, you know, of course, when they see the word world, they think that it's, it's talking about the entire globe, but the word world has a lot of different meanings, just like every other word. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of different meanings to every word. Pretty much you, you come across. If you go to the dictionary, I think it's maybe about 20 different definitions for the word world in um, the Webster or the uh, Marion Something like that, give or take, you know what I'm saying? So you have to know which, you know, definition that, that, that fits that particular hookup, right? Verse 16, it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. But pretty much the focus is on, on verse 15 with the world and, and um, you know, and every creature, right? So now, I want to do this real quick. Let's get this, you know what, let me go into the blue letter. Oh, I'm already here. Okay, let, yeah, let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. See that? See how it has a, 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 um, a S on it? That means that it's worlds plural. So obviously there's more than one world. You see? So we have to, you know, pinpoint that too. And let's go off into this word world real quick because there's different meanings of the word world in the scriptures and it's very important that you know you know which which world is being spoken of in each um you know scripture when you see it okay so this is um aeon aeon or eon g165 
It says forever and unbroken age, perpetuity of time, eternity. Then you have a number two, which is the world's universe. And then you have number three, period of time, age. See? And that's going off into a period of time and age in this particular context. All right? And the Strong's definition, it says, um, it's from the same as G104, properly an age. See? An age. It's like you have the Bronze Age, you had the, you know... You know, you had the Egyptian age, you know, I mean, you know, it's different sets of times where empires were, you know, on top and then they failed. It was the end of their age. <laughs> it just is what it is. And matter of fact, the Americas or um, Esau Edom, the so-called white man, his age is ending right now. See, he's been ruling his rulership is his his world or his government, his way of ruling his life, you know, is about to end. And there's going to be a new age to come, which is the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, which are the Israelites. Right. OK, but it goes on to say by implication, the world, especially Jewish of Messianic period, see, present or future age, course, eternal. So it's going off into a, a period of time and this new period of time that's about to happen is let me go back into this other one. Let's go into the Apocrypha real quick. Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 7. Oh, Salakia, that's not what I want. Um, oh, no, that's not it. Uh, Salakia. Um, um, Salakia here. So lucky, that's what I wanted. Second Ezra, let me start at verse uh, 7. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 7. Then answer I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? See, this is an age or, or period of time that's about to, you know, that's about to end. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau was born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. See that word world? It's going off, not the end of, you know, just everything is about to blow up. It's going off into the end of his age, the end of his time, the end of him ruling his society, his, his, his time period of ruling. That's what that's going off into, right? For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See? So there's a world that's about to end, a society that's about to end, and there's a society or age that's about to begin, and that's going off into um, our forefather Jacob, which, you know, when Yahweh Shai comes, that's going to be an everlasting age. It's not going to stop. See, this, this particular age that we're in right now, or all the other ages, of all the other rulers that ever ruled, they had a time period where they ruled for, you know, some hundreds of years, thousand years, you know, and then that age would stop, then somebody else would take over. And someone else will take over, you know, so on and so on. So, but this new age that's about to happen, it's never going to end, right? So let's go back. So I wanted to point out that the point of there is multiple worlds as well. And then you have what you call um, world when it goes off into cosmos. Because I think that's what that one, that particular one is. And uh, let's go to Mark again. 16 and 15 let's see how it reads in the nlt the new living translation reads and then he told them go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone anyone who believes okay all right all right i see but i wanted to go off into this word world right here let's go into it the last one was eon right And this one right here, see, is Cosmos. See? So this particular one in this verse, it is talking about going throughout the entire world as far as the globe, the planet, so to speak. You know, because you have to understand that there are Israelites that were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. This is the reason why he's telling them to go, go to all these places. So when people see that word world, they get a little bit mixed up. You see? So we, we, we've gone into two different definitions of the word world with two precepts already. 
or basically three precepts. Okay, so this is going off into basically like the, you know, pretty much the world, the universe, or the the earth. Because like I said again, the Israelites were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, right? So now let's go to John real quick. And I hope I'm not losing anybody on this. Um, just want to flow in the spirit. Let's just move it in the spirit. John chapter 11. And um, let's start at verse 49 or so. And um, let me see. And this is where, you know, of course, they would, you know, they was plotting on, on your house side. Let me start at verse 47 for a little more context. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council. So the chief priests and the Pharisees, those were Israelites, right? And said, what do we for this man do of many miracles? And they're talking about Yahweh's side, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. See that? The Romans, this, this, this gospel wasn't for the Romans. These Israelites were wicked as hell. They wanted to keep those places in society of the Roman society or the Roman age. Like they had good little positions. Like today, that would be a person that's got a good job. You know, you know, you got these so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. You know, they got a good job or what they would call a good job. They're making some make a hey, some of Jake. You know, they're making um, millions of dollars in America. Six figures, a couple of hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. You know what I'm saying? They consider it to be a good job and they don't want to lose those positions. So pretty much overall, they didn't care anything about the kingdom really to come because they were doing good in, in Esau's age or society or his world. Right. Let me get that back again. It says, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that year, which we know he was an Israelite, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. What people? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Haitians, Jamaicans, you know, um, those that look like the other nations, because it's a DNA thing. The seed line goes through the father. And if, you know, the scriptures talks about if your spirit resonate with the spirit of, of Yahweh, then you are you are Israelite. If your spirit resonates with these scriptures and you can actually understand that this is not talking about the whole world. Everybody on the planet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, but don't get me wrong, because some Israelites, they're not going to get it. They're just not going to get it because the Lord blinded them. You know, it's just not for them. But overall, there are people out here that don't necessarily look like black people. Because it's not a, a, a skin color thing. It's just not. It's a DNA thing. If you come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you are part of the elect, you can look like Joe Biden, and you're going to get it. Because our people were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. This is why you have to understand the history of what's going on. That way, if you understand the history, you'll know that when it talks about words like these worlds, or this world, or that world, you'll know the differences in, in, in the context and you'll get it better, right? Okay? So, it goes on to say. Verse 49 again. And one of them named Caiaphas Salachia, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. What nation is he talking about here? He's talking about the children of Israel. He's not talking about the nation of the Romans or, you know, the, the nation of Esau. He's not talking about the nation of, you know, um, um, Elam or uh, the Moabites or the Ammonites. You have to realize that the, the Israelites were in captivity to the Romans at the time. You see, it says, and, th and this spake he, not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahweh should die for that nation. What nation? The Israelites. Right? And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. And that's the point right there, right? And in the NLT, verse 53, it says, So from that time on, the Jewish leaders, 
began to plot Yahweh's death, right? But let's go up into the, see, because it says that, let me get verse 52 back again, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So even in a, a verse like that, people would be like, well, he's talking about the Gentiles now. No, he's talking about Israelites that were living Gentile customs that were scattered throughout the four corners. And this is where the God, this is why the gospel was going out through all, throughout all the universe or that particular world. Because the gospel got to reach. Matter of fact, the gospel, the gospel even got to reach the um, the heathen so they can get their judgment. But the good news got to go out throughout all these places because the how side scattered us throughout all these places. Right. So now let's go off into Luke chapter 21. started uh verse 20 and we and when ye shall see jerusalem compass with armies then know that the de desolation thereof is nigh then let them which are in judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein for these be the days of vengeance that all these that all things which are written may be fulfilled but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land and and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. See that? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See? So this was a time, you know, it, it, there, there came up a time where the, the Israelites, you know, hey. Israelites done went into captivity a, a bunch of times and they've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth and this was just one of those particular times when that went down right but let's get um James 1 and 1 you know we just you know just proving the scattering but it's, it's so many scriptures on the scattering because I mean the Lord I mean you know that's a part of you know um the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 that we were going to captivity and um unto our enemies that's done happen multiple times. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of Yahweh and of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to the 12 tribes which were scattered abroad, greetings. See? He's this let these letters were going to the Israelites that were scattered throughout all these regions, man. There were Israelites, as a matter of fact, there's a, what's that scripture? Um, um devout Jews. Let me see. Acts chapter 2. What's the lock yet? In verse 5. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noise, I just, the point that I wanted to get is, and there were Jews dwelling at Jerusalem. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. See that? So there were Jews, you know, devout Jews out of every nation. Why? Because, you know, hey, well, you know, Israelites are everywhere, man. You're not going to get around it. We've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth and we don't all look like Wesley Snipes, man. It's a DNA thing. Right? So let's get another precept. Let's go to John. As a matter of fact, it was another one too. Um, where the Jews was ran out of, uh, where was they run out of? Was it Italy? Salakia. Trying to think how that's worded. It's been a minute on that one. Yep, Acts 18 and 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, see, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. See? See that? So they were in Italy. Jews, man. I mean, it, it, it's simple, really. But I, I do get it that that word, you know, we, we've all been there, man. We've all been to Christian churches where, 
we just wasn't getting the, you know, the proper understanding because the spirit wasn't dealing with us at the time. And that's why it's so, you know, beautiful right now. You know, to, you know, and you should be really thankful to the Lord, man, that he, he awakened you to this truth to, to bring you really, truly into it, to show you really what's going on. Because there is a lot of Christians out here, man, they're not going to get it and they're going to die not getting it. They're going to die really believing that a so-called white man with blonde hair and blue eyes are coming back to save them and nothing can be further from the truth. That is an idol. And the Lord is a jealous power, man. He said that he will have no other gods before him. Right? Now, this is John 18 and 20. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking again because it's red letter. Yahweh Shai answered him, I spake openly to the world I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. And in secret, have I have I said nothing? So we clearly know that the, the Jews were at the synagogues and the temples, right? It's clearly telling you that. Let me read it back again. Yahweh I answered him, I spake openly to the world. There that word world again, right? I have, he says, I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. The Jews always in the temple and in the synagogue. And in secret have I said nothing, right? Let's go into this word world. Let's see which one this one is. Now, remember, we had Cosmos and, and, and um, Eon. Now, here you go. This one, this one, this particular one is Cosmos. And it's the same, you know, but it is going off into this particular one. See, they have how many meanings here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meanings right here for the word world. Right. So which one do you know? Which one do you go into? That's the whole thing. So let's go back. Let's read it again. And Yahweh Shai answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always, always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. And Yahweh Shai spoke everywhere. But he was, you know, they went to the, those, those temples and those synagogues. He spoke out in the open and everything. Right? But we know who he was speaking to. We know who he came for, man. Matter of fact, let's get, um... It's going to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Because you can bring these scriptures out to people, man. If it's the spirit not dealing with them, they're not going to get it anyway. You know, because they're going to argue John 3, 16, that world. I ain't even, I forgot about that one. I ain't even, because <laughs> that's the one that they really go after. The, the John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. They and, and we can get that too. We can get that one too. Right? Matthew 15 and 24, but he answered me and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is right out of your house size mouth. He telling you who he came for. Right. But let's go to John 3, 16. Because this is the one that the Christians really just they can't get it, man. It's just like, but see, and then they can't understand. They really just can't can't understand that the Lord would choose one nation out of all the other nations. They just, you know, like you can choose anything that you want. You pull up at a damn drive through You choose a number three. Why didn't you get the number one combo? Why didn't you get the number seven combo? Because you wanted the number three. You get to choose, you know. <laughs> but when it comes to the Lord, he don't get to choose. You see? They just, they, they, it can't, they can't fathom it. Like, but we're all people. Yeah, we're all people. But the Lord chose a, a, a portion that he wanted just for himself, man. John 3, 16, of course, you know, it's the classic. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when they see that, they go crazy, man. They see that who, whosoever, they lose it. Let's go into this word world here. Let's see what the word world here is. Is it cosmos and eons? See, cosmos. All right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, see, when they see that whosoever, matter of fact, let's get that in, um, and check this out. Because you do have to go precept upon precept. You can't just read the Bible like it's just, you know, a, a, a novel and, oh, I love chapter three and, 
girl, it said this and it said you know, all that bullshit. Like it's one of them damn love books. One of them them sex books. Let me see, is this the one I want? No, this is not the one I want. Uh, where is it at? I can read this one, though. This is a, Let me read this one as well, though. Acts 5 and 31. No, let me start at verse 30. The God of our fathers raised... Who's the fathers that's being spoken of? The ancestors, right? Who are the ancestors? The fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. See? <laughs> Can't get around it, man. Let me see, though. I wanted to uh, get this other one, though. It's been a minute. That's why it really is good to go off into the... Because this is um really like... Uh, Back to the basic type of uh, uh, lesson, man. Is this the one that I wanted? Let me see here. Yeah, yeah, this is the one right here. Acts 2. Verse 21, let me start there. It says, and it shall come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever, remember we had the word whosoever in John 3, 16, whosoever believe. It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall come on the, whosoever shall call on the name of, of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. See? Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, a man approved of Yahweh, among you by miracles and wonders and signs which Yahweh did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of Yahweh, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucif crucified and slain, whom Yahweh hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. But the point is, is it was the men of Israel. They were the ones that 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 wanted Yahweh Shai, you know, kill. Not the Romans, the other nation, the heathen. They was the one that had the power to do so. Why? Because the Israelites were in captivity to the Romans, man. And you will never see a scripture where the Lord was trying to save Pontius Pilate or trying to save King Agrippa or any of those heathen. He wasn't trying to save no Romans, man. He was going strictly to the children of Israel, man. As a matter of fact, let's get a... Uh, let me see this Matthew. It's like about two more precepts. Matthew 10 and 5, it says, These twelve Yahweh sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why was he telling them that? Because this is who the gospel was for. The, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Some knew they were Israelites. Some didn't know they were Israelites. Some were just living like complete damn heathen, man. All these letters that you see off in, in the scriptures as far as what Paul wrote, you know, and um, James and uh, uh, a Jew. Man, oh, hey, those letters, Tim, you know, those letters were all written to Israelites. Um, um, pretty much just synagogues or temples. That's where those letters were being read at. They wasn't being, you know, they wasn't going to anyone else, man. It's like if you say, you know, because people are, are see words like whosoever, you know. Say if a teacher got a classroom, they got 30 students in there. And the teacher, you know, says, well, you know, we're going to go on a field trip to the zoo. And whosoever get permission from their parents, you know, can go. Right? Right? So now are they talking to just the 30 students in the classroom or are they talking to everybody else in the school? The other classroom doors are closed. Nobody ever even hear the conversation. Can the science teacher take the math teachers, um, 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 students on the field trip with them? No, it's whosoever is in the room that they're speaking to. Or they might say, you know, well, you know, 
we're gonna have a you know little little um little get together you know during the um the last day of school and whosoever wants pizza you know we're gonna have a, a note uh, uh we need a note sign from your parents you know you some of you may be allergic to cheat whatever the case but anyway it's going to be for though whosoever is within the vicinity of hearing that conversation. It's not for the entire damn school, man. I'm just using it as an example. <laughs> so fuck you. But let's just get this one last preset. And this right here is generally a, a, a knockout killer or not a one two one two punch, so to speak. Isaiah. Chapter 45. And 17. We'll end out here, Yahweh Ratazah. And I do pray that this is edifying and that I, you know, I'm not losing anyone on this because this is very important to know. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. See? This is going to an age or a society of the world of Israel, man. Let's let's see what this one is. Now this one would be in the Hebrew. Those other ones was in um basically the Greek. Let's get the Hebrew one. Uh They have it alam. See that's a that's a whole nother definition right there. Alam. See? Long duration antiquity futurity see he's talking about a future forever ever everlasting evermore perpetual old ancient world see this is going to be a world without end when the lord yahweh side comes to rule it's not going to be no other nations involved with this they're going to be involved but they're going to be in slavery they're going to be under under the rulership and government of the israelites man the same way that we're under the rulership and government of them right now it's just common sense man so you know i, I pray that that was you know edifying is you know and answer the question um so with that hey I, hey this truth is 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 being revealed to the prophets man in these last days all that christianity that white jesus christianity shit that shit is through that boat done sail y'all can't get us with that no more man you know now again the uh, the lord is going to leave some of our people in that two-thirds of our people are going to get caught i pray that i'm not one of those people and a lot of brothers they come into this truth and then they'll go back to that shit you know what talk what the scriptures talks about a dog returning to his vomit I don't want to be no parts of that, man. This is the, hey, and don't let nothing trickle up in you and get you to doubt him. That's another thing, too, because, you know, the devil, he'll get you to doubt and you get to thinking like, well, well, well maybe, maybe, the, you know, the whosoever is talking about the other nation. No, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Don't let none of that shit fester in your mind. You rebuke that shit immediately and push it out of your head, man. You know, because the enemy, he will come at you like that. And then he'll he'll have little uh, minions running around, you know, and, and they try and stress their argument to you and, and try and pu push and force that bullshit on you, man. And have you fall back into Christ white Jesus Christianity, which is idol worship, man. You don't want no parts of that. Shun they asses. Get rid of them. Nah, hey, you know, you, they don't get it. Tell them to bounce, man. Go ahead. You can move on, man. Anyway, with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashola.